As soon as a diet or a nutrition protocol gains some momentum, people come in and they start to criticize it. It's like it's their job to come in and poke holes in something that is working. The fact is, when you look at the ketogenic diet, it's very, very effective. And whenever something is that effective, you can expect a lot of criticism. And that's totally okay. In fact, that's honestly what is so great about the consumer mentality today, is that we actually look at things and we address the issues. So in this video, I'm gonna address the issue of the ketogenic diet and its effect on inflammation. See, it's not an issue at all. In fact, what it is is that the ketogenic diet does have an effect on inflammation, but people really have a lot of caution with the word inflammation. You see, people tend to think that because the word inflammation is linked to so many diseases, that it itself is a disease state. So if we talk about inflammation, then we're really dancing a fine line between making a medical claim and things like that. So full disclaimer, we are talking about this from an educational side of things, but there is a lot of research that points to the fact the ketogenic diet does have a positive effect on inflammation. So let's look at that research and let's break it down a little bit. Hey, if you haven't already, you're tuned in to the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel, all backed by science with new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. Also, make sure you head on over to highleat.com so you can check out the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. So what is inflammation? Well, let's just give a quick breakdown. So it's like when you bump your elbow, you bump your knee, it gets all swollen and red, that's inflammation in the acute sense. You also have inflammation going on at the cellular level and it's sort of an immune response. So whenever we have kind of free radical damage or anything going on in our bodies, trauma, we have that same inflammatory response but happening at a very, very small level. So doctors and scientists and research all over have found that inflammation is literally at the root of just about every single disease state. If you look at all kinds of different chronic illnesses, you back it up, you see inflammation. Okay, so when we start looking at how we can address inflammation, we can of course address a lot of illnesses and a lot of pain points for people. So let's take a step back and let's look at how the ketogenic diet does play a very powerful role on the inflammatory response within the body. You see, it has to do with something known as the NLRP3 inflammasome. The NLRP3 inflammasome is a specific pathway, and it's a bunch of proteins that basically travel along a specific pathway and trigger what are called cytokine responses. Specific cytokine responses like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 1 8, just to name a couple of them. These cytokines go out and they trigger additional inflammation responses throughout the course of the body. So, for example, if you were to get sick, or for example, if you had an autoimmune disease, all that kind of stuff. So, when we're looking at the effect of what is called beta hydroxybutyrate, the main ketone body that's produced on a ketogenic diet, we see that that ketone directly inhibits, it directly slows down the NLRP3 inflammasome. So therefore you have reduced amounts of those proteins, of the NLRP3 proteins going throughout the bloodstream, meaning less of a catalyst to trigger inflammation. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. You see, there's the reactive oxygen species component as well. So I know this is a lot of big words and a lot of mouthfuls, but it'll all make sense. You see, reactive oxygen species is literally just the free radicals that float around through our body. Throughout traditional metabolism, we're gonna have free radical buildup. It's just the way it goes. But when we look at glucose metabolism in general, whenever our bodies are using carbs as a fuel source, we have a high degree of free radical damage that occurs. Again, it's not a bad thing, it's kind of a normal thing. But if we're consuming carbohydrates all the time and we're just utilizing glucose, we have a big buildup of those free radicals. When we go over to ketone utilization, it burns much cleaner. Now, full disclaimer, you're always burning glucose even when you're in ketosis. So you're always gonna have some free radical damage that's occurring. But let's just say for a hypothetical sense that if you're burning 100% glucose, you're gonna have 100% free radical damage occurring. But if you reduce that down to 50% ketones and 50% glucose, again, your body still always has some glucose, you're gonna be at a 50% overall free radical damage. I mean, that's simple math and it's totally hypothetical, but it gives you the illusion of what's going on. It illustrates exactly how this process works. So when we have less of an oxidation effect occurring, we have less free radicals and it's easier for the body to clean up and less inflammatory response. So Dr. Swanson at the University of California, San Francisco actually conducted a study and this was pretty interesting. He used something known as 2-deoxyglucose to stop the actual metabolism of glucose in rats. Now, it's important that I mention that it's with rats because it's the right thing to do. But when he used this 2-deoxyglucose to stop glucose production in rats, it forced them to produce ketone bodies. And they found that whenever they produced these ketone bodies and weren't metabolizing glucose, their inflammatory markers went back down to a control basis. So what that means is that if these mice had an inflammatory condition, let's say they were very, very sick, they could find that by literally causing their body to produce ketones by stopping glucose metabolism with 2-deoxyglucose, 
that they could actually bring their inflammatory markers back down to baseline as if they weren't sick, as if they were perfectly healthy. Now this has to do with a particular protein that was activated known as CTBP. This CTBP actually modulates a specific genetic response to inflammation. So it's not just temporarily fixing inflammation like what happens when you take an aspirin or something. It's actually changing a little bit of your genetic code to actually make it so you have less likelihood of inflammation occurring overall. So this is just one thing that I want to rebuttal. One of the many, many holes that people are trying to poke in the ketogenic diet. Again, something gets popular, it's gonna end up having some criticism. It's all good. It just makes for some great content for me to create on this channel. So as always, keep it locked in here in my videos. If you have ideas for future videos or there's questions that you want answers to, put them down below in the comment section. See you soon.